Is the Chinese government going to release its own cryptocurrency? I'll give you guys a hint. No hint. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the Crypto Basic Podcast. You are listening to our flagship Friday episode where we talk about the crypto events this week. Now, my name is Kareem Baruch, and I'm here with my co hosts, Brent Philbin. What's up? What's up, everybody? And Adam Ruthless Levy. Good How's it going today? morning. Good morning. I was going to say Vietnam, but like that's such an old it. reference. I felt good but it, it kinda morning, isn't, though. Vietnam. I don't know. It kind of isn't that old of a reference because it's also a Family Guy reference, and then all the references that reference that, right? It's one of those like, it's such a meme that it stays. Uh, modern, it's such a too. great like, yeah. It's just a great clip too. R.I.P. Robin Williams. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what a way Definitely. to start this one off. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know, Adam, what do you expect from a guy that doesn't even make his bed? All right. Yeah. Look at oh, man. <laughs> oh, what? I, I, that, that's, that's a rule. You, know, you got to not... wake up. You got to make your bed. And I like, I want to have a good day. So I had to make my bed. I want to have a good podcast. So I got to get in the zone. <laughs> Guys, my bed is made every single day. Okay. Very impressive. I call your bluff. Well, nope. he has my a bed is made every single day. He has a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so she's, she's, she's Who cheating. I know, That's not I happen fair. to know is very clean, so she probably can't put up with this mess. But anyway, guys, enough about how messy we all are on a personal level. Let's get into some cryptocurrency news. Now, we usually like to start off the podcast by going through our rapid fire section. These are headlines that caught our eye, but we're not going to do a deep dive on. Which one of you guys is going to take the rapid fire today? Uh, I got it because I, I found a bunch of uh, fun little quick rapid uh, tidbits on the internet. So this one very uh, is wikipedia.org is now a verified Brave browser publisher, which I feel like this is why Brave is such – like this is such a good – use for brave if you have brave because every year wikipedia donates or sends emails out asking for donations but now you just get to like look home through wikipedia and be like hey thanks for letting me read about alexander hamilton you know for you know five pages Pretty worth specific. of stuff we all know that reading about Alexander Hamilton ends up with you reading about some kind of molecular fungus that eats something in the Amazon. Wikipedia yeah. dives are... <laughs> you can go yeah, there's definitely cheap. rabbit holes there. Click, definitely click, rabbit holes, click. yeah. They uh, don't even take Bitcoin yet, right? Like, the, I, I feel like I was... Earlier in the year, I would, they were asking for donations, and everybody was like, why aren't we getting them to accept Bitcoin? And they, they didn't. So I guess now they're accepting Brave, but not Bitcoin? I don't know. I mean, it makes it just makes sense with Brave. I know, like if they were getting any of the this is the way for for the listeners that may not know this, the way Brave works is if you're not a verified publisher, they still collect all the rewards that you would possibly be owed and hold them for ninety days and then release them back into the blockchain if they if you don't end up becoming verified. So there was probably just like fifty k laying there that uh that Bra that Wikipedia was able to grab just by filling out a little thing. And there's, it's weird. Some people are like, they take these weird principled stands against it. Like, how could you accept donations on my behalf? And it's like, I'm not really accepting the donation on your behalf. Like, if it's, if you take it and you want it, great. If not, we give it back. Brent, I want to hop in here and point out, like, uh, this is probably the second or third time that we have covered some kind of entity doing this with Brave. And it really shows a uh, good design there. It's kind of genius from a game theory standpoint. Have the money there so it has real value, so there's something actually accumulating, and then you're giving people the chance, like, you know, for, for Wikipedia in this case, it's like, hop on, essentially, you know, become part of the system, and you immediately get paid. What better incentive than that? It's, you know, a lot of times cryptos are trying to get companies to adopt them and they have to put an investment here. They're getting paid because yep. of how they designed it. It's smart. Yeah. So the next one is a Venezuelan pharmacy named Farm Market, as in like F 
A R M, like just farm and market, but they're not. It's not two M's. Uh, has added dash. They dropped an M. They dropped an M. The people just love these. You know, I don't know. I was in Tampa. There were so many puns everywhere at all the restaurants, and it was like, guys, chill. Like it, you don't need like a bad joke for you know your name. So. They've added Dash as a payment option in 22 locations. And this is just, once again, good for Venezuela because they just are, are kind of been forced into adopting cryptocurrency in certain areas because of just like the w- whole way the government is. And, and just uh, I'd like to interject here that Adam is upset at people for having weird, punny sounding names that sound like something else. And his screen name for all of time has been Ruthless, but spelled in an ironic, funny way. That's so. completely different, Whoa. Brent. That is completely different, Brent. Rules for thee, but Brent not for me. Oh, God, I get it, because it's Entity and Brent. You're literally a hypocrite. No, no, I'm cool with the pun names. I don't have any issue with them. I think they're great. I actually, I actually think Brent Entity is a good pun name. And I, Ruthless is not a pun. That's that's me. Like I just decided to like sound it out how people kind of say it. Also, it was I smoked some weed when I was playing Xbox 15 years ago. I was like, I'm gonna think of something sick, and this is what I came up with. And I just like slapped it on my star's weed, name. Xbox likely story. We're yeah. gonna move. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. So there is a interactive bird feeder currently on YouTube. That you can, you know, there's there's a link will be in the show notes. And you can, for 50 cents USD, you can feed the birds. But, like, you have to use Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, or Nano. Doge. Uh, Doge. Doge, sorry. Doge? Doge? What do you mean? Dogecoin? I, I, Doge. I always thought it was Dogecoin. No, it's Doge. Dogecoin? Yeah. This is like GIF and, and GIF. Is it I think it's GIF? actually Doggy Coin. <laughs> oh my god, Do- we got a third. I'm gonna start <laughs> posting these links in the chat, by the way. Sorry. Anyway, continue. Fair uh, enough. For for those that don't I didn't we didn't even mention this. We are streaming on Twitch right now. We don't normally do that for the Friday flagship. We're just gonna test this out for a few weeks, see if we get any engagement. Um since we had the, the Twitch channel, it's pretty easy to stream. So uh, if you wanna get your Friday flagship a day early with all our ums and all that shit in it, feel free to jump on Twitch and watch. And uh, so here, there are some birds that you that pop in. There are house sparrows, collared doves, and then a great tit or a blue tit or a cold tit that come in there. And you know, yes, tits are actually birds. Oh, somebody uh, just donated. I just oh, saw nice. the drop. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Boom. But yeah, so there's all these different types of birds in there, and it's located in Slovakia. And it's just this is just like a cool little use case for uh crypto and actually this is a legitimate use case like something for me to use my like dog coin that i have sitting there because i bought it as a troll forever ago so maybe i'll actually give some to the birds so what's happening here is people are holding these birds food hostage for you to send them crypto i can't believe it that's so scummy for them to not give the birds the food that they need for their sustenance until you send them some nano also, those noises you hear in the background, the first time I've ever streamed my flagship live, my girlfriend is standing on the bed, smashing the wall. I guess there's a bug. <clears throat> I don't know. So if you're hearing that, you know, enjoy. I couldn't, but I'm and, glad uh, to know that's happening now. <laughs> and the last one is actually, <laughs> the last one is U.S. Air Force partners with blockchain firm to automate data management. And there's uh, this... It's called Constellation, which I think is DAG, um, is a ticker. I don't really know why it's DAG, whatever, but I just think this is kind of cool that the, U- the Air Force is also making, you know, partnerships with, uh, legitimate cryptocurrencies or companies now that are, are you know, blockchain companies. And I'm not really sure, like, how it's, how it's going to work, what they're really going to, what they're really going to be doing with each other, but I just think it's kind of, I mean, man, you know, we're talking about two years ago. It's like, hey, random cryptocurrency company partnering with another cryptocurrency company, which kind of like means not that much. But now it's the U.S. Air Force partnering with a blockchain firm. And that that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's not like they're partnering with a crypto. They're, they're just trying to store some data in a more secure way, which we know is definitely one of the greatest use cases of blockchain. So Definitely. 
All right, before we go on, I need to take a second here, guys. We do have an important sponsor to talk about. We are sponsored by Wild Foods. Wildfoods.co is where you can get real food, real ingredients, and you can get it to you really fast. They painstakingly source from small farms around the world, and they are officially Crypto Basic Podcast sponsors. So head on over there. You can use the code CryptoBasic12. We don't even get a kickback from that. That is just a way for you to get 12% off your order. And if you had participated in our giveaway, you could have even gotten some gift cards. There will be future giveaways, but not for a while because they don't really pay us that much. So anyway, (laughs) wildfoods.co, go check that out. Tell them Brent sent you, and we'll move on to the news. Up, and we're starting with me. Whoops. (laughs) (laughs) I was was not paying attention to that. I was like, wait, it's going to... Uh, Brett, right. Brett, why don't you tell us about your favorite human being, Craig Wright? Craig Wright, of course. My favorite human being, Craig Wright. So we retweeted this on the Crypto Basic Twitter, which is why I don't have a link ready right about now, but I am going to go get it. Uh, but basically, we uh, Craig Wright was in court. Again, it's that same. It's the same Kleinman case where they've they're basically fighting about the estate and they're trying to figure out who owes who what. And he, we, there was a reporter named Katie Anania that was in the that was in the courtroom for for this while it was going on, and she was basically live tweeting as it was happening. So the what I know about this and what I researched about this was basically. Her tweets, I'm taking them at face value and accepting that they are real because she was there. And this is the uh, this is the tweet storm here. And so she was watching and just tweeting everything that's going on. It's ridiculous. Craig Wright's lawyers continue to try and move the goalposts before this whole. This is actually there's resolution here, so we're not just talking about the goalposts moving. But we've talked in previous episodes where they he keeps coming up with new reasons why he can't prove that he's satoshi because he fucking isn't so like he he's like oh no like there's this thing where uh this guy's gonna deliver a thing to me in in 2021 and then i'll be able to really show you i'm satoshi or 2020 or whatever so they're trying besides why should people expect that satoshi nakamoto can provably prove something i mean what is it (laughs) (laughs) you gotta take it on faith man uh, okay, so anyway, he they're trying to get it done to January 20, 2020. They're trying to push it back again. They beg in three or four different ways for three or four different reasons to extend the time. That's like their kind of closing arguments is literally just like, let's extend this. Then the Kleinman family ro- lawyer, they go on a tirade recapping all of the lies that Craig Wright told over the course of the case. <laughs> and they, they just like list them all out. So he finishes with a, with a pseudo quote from Mark Twain that says, the problem with not telling the truth is to remember the lies you previously stated. So the, the judge says, after everything is concluded, says, Dr. Wright did not impress me as someone telling the truth. <laughs> All of his testimonies have been rejected on this matter. And so now anything that Craig Wright said in court is considered not to have existed. I am not a lawyer, so I don't understand why this isn't perjury. Uh, Like, if he's, if the judge is literally like, I don't fucking believe you and throws out all your testimony, isn't that lying? Like, can't, isn't that something we can charge somebody for? I don't know. There might be a difference between just identifying that somebody's not a reliable witness and actually identifying, like, hey, you lied about this specific thing that we can prove created, you know what I'm saying, obstructed this this way. I don't know. Anyway, all that got thrown out. The verdict was that 50% of all of the patents that Craig Wright has gotten related to Bitcoin need to be awarded to the Kleinman family estate. And 50% of the Bitcoin in question needs to be awarded as well. So Craig Wright was ordered to pay 480,000 Bitcoin, not dollars worth of Bitcoin, 480,000 Bitcoin. Jeez. To the Kleinman family. This is depending on uh Kareem, what do you think the price of Bitcoin is today? Uh ten thousand. Yeah, it's been a big crash. It's like nine K. So depending on where the price is, it's either four or five billion dollars worth of worth of uh Bitcoin that is uh, basically being ordered here. So that is pretty insane. I certainly don't think that it should be 
I don't know that he's going to be able to give this. I don't think he has it. Yeah, like, I was he doesn't have ask, access. Does to he have access to this kind of money? I mean, that's an insane amount of money. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think so. I I don't think so. I mean, he says he's going to comply with the court. Like I've seen the the interviews with him afterwards. He's like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to comply. I'm going to have to sell stuff. And he's like, also, you should think about the fact that once I send it to them, they're going to have to sell the Bitcoin on capital gains. So even if I send them Bitcoin and then they get it, they're going to say they're going to have to pay 40 percent or whatever on that money or maybe not capital gains or state tax or whatever it is. And they're going to crash the market. He's, he's like, I I was holding off on not crashing the market with all of my coins that I have because I've got principles. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Wow. Anyway. It's all hilarious. Uh, it's what we would normally put in our shots fired section. We've got Peter McCormick. Uh, Craig Wright has lost his case against Ira Kleinman, awarded 50%. The judge rejects CSW's testimony, finds that he perjured himself with falsified documents. I don't think he found perjury. I don't know. And then he just puts like, ah, see you in Malta, you melt. So, so Peter McCormick, <laughs> what's a uh, friend of the show, Peter McCormick, who's been on, we, we had him on the show a couple of months ago, right before all this started happening, has been in a lawsuit with, with Craig Wright on the, on this whole thing. Cause Craig, he called Craig Wright a fraud. So Craig Wright sued him. And, uh, it sounds like he's pretty optimistic about his chances now. <laughs> so we'll see. So that's, uh, that's, that's what's going on with the Craig Wright drama. If you're following guys, complete moron. So, uh, I can, oh. I, you know, I don't. The official wording of uh, is Craig Wright a fraud that they came out with in court was uh, Doctor Wright is dishonest. He is a serial forger. So I don't know if we're allowed to say he's a fraud, but we're allowed to say he's dishonest and he's a serial forger. <laughs> we're allowed to say whatever we want. We, yeah. <laughs> we were calling him a fraud since before this court case existed, and we're going to. True, we did have an episode titled <laughs> "Craig Wright is a Turd." So. <laughs> You can go ahead and search for that one if you're interested. Yeah. Well, what's a melt? I, I... that's some come UK on a melt. Insult, you I'm know, sure. it's like a gazoo. Oh, you it's know. like oh yeah, of course. <laughs> it's it's like it's like calling him a glip glop. All right, guys, listen. Enough oh. about Craig Wright. I want to tell you guys about somebody with equal moral principles, but they actually know what they're doing. This is a hacker. Um, just to show you some of the different points of attack that we are exposed to. Did you guys hear about the Capital One hacker at all? Was that in anybody's radar? I haven't it, heard about that. I, I do remember here. The, the Capital One hacker was, um, I, I feel like they put her picture up. Uh, the, the, she like almost claimed responsibility for it. Yep. Right? You're right. That's, uh, that's correct. So it was a, um, a female. So it was an individual that was accused with perpetrating this big uh, hack of Capital One and their credit card information. But it turns out that the way she accomplished that was actually she works for an undisclosed cloud computing company or cloud server company. So she was able to hack customer servers to mine cryptocurrency for herself and to steal information. So this is basically what happened. This company, some people speculating that it was uh, Amazon Web Services, but I mean, I didn't see any credible evidence as to why they're speculating that. I think that's just something that came to people's mind. But essentially, she figured out that some customers, when they were getting cloud services, were not setting up their firewalls properly. So she essentially targeted those specific consumers with the leak that she knew they had, stole all this information. Uh, her last name was Thompson. I didn't get her first name. Uh, but she get she got 140,000 social security numbers during this hack. Damn. 1 wow. million Canadian social insurance numbers and 80,000 bank account numbers. And she also got stuff like credit scores, credit limits, balances, and online, on a, apparently on some forum under, under a pseudonym, she wrote that if I had a partner, I could have them take over my crypto jacking enterprise and be a stay at home. And that was the second part of this that I wanted to share. She essentially <laughs> took those empty servers, installed a bunch of mining software on them, had it directed to her wallets that she controlled, and was just single handedly. And just referring to it like it's her, like it's her side hustle. Yeah. She's like oh, I got my crypto jacking enterprise, you know. Just need a couple more partners to make that real big. <laughs> Hit at me, get at me in the comments. Hashtag boss bag. <laughs> so, so, so she said to be a stay at home, as in a stay at home mom. Is what she's referring to, I or, assume. Or, no, just a stay-at-home hacker, maybe. 
Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but it's still just like very odd statement. And are you talking yeah, you about? You want to be a hacker from the office? That's the worst kind of hacker. Yeah. <laughs> you, if you, how, like, you've really yeah. failed at hacking if you have to go into your office first. I would <laughs> think, think about that how- hackers are generally stay at home everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, think about how frustrated she is when her like boss at work is yelling at her over some code, and she's like. I know your social security number, your credit card. I'm going <laughs> to, you know who I am. So she just wants to be at home and be her own boss. That's the American dream, except she's doing it with hacking and stealing. So is this the Capital One breach that was maybe a few, like a year ago or a couple no, of years ago? Recent. recent. Well, there, so there was, I thought there was one where they basically had a massive, uh, maybe I'm thinking of the Equifax? other credit. Yeah, I'm thinking of Equifax. Equifax the yeah. credit, yeah, no, mm-hmm. even worse, the one that, where it wasn't you were a customer by choice, but like by default, they get to run a credit thing on you. Anyway, anyway, before we go off the rails, Adam, I want to yes. ask you about this uh, this license, one of the first crypto license. Yeah. Well, actually, not one of the first. The first in the freaking world. It's a first crypto bank license that we've seen at all. And basically... It's kind of, I mean, this takes place in Switzerland and the co-founders of this thing, it's called Signum, S-Y-G-N-U-M, Crypto Bank. Uh, They've been awarded a Swiss banking license and it's a game changer because this is basically saying that they can now just operate in Switzerland as a bank. And, you know, they they went through all the legal hoops of, you know, to kind of integrate this, integrate cryptocurrency into the actual more, I forget, the established financial sector is what uh, the wording was, you know? And I'm curious how this is going to impact the future of banking. And 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 as usual, Switzerland is kind of ahead of the curve with uh, blockchain. You know, as uh, I'm sure we mentioned Zug on here, which is like the crypto Silicon Crypto Valley kind of thing. Crypto Valley is what they've dubbed it. Okay, yeah, get, get Silicon out of there. There's nothing fake about Silicon. Loot. Yeah, apparently I've been saying Silicon for years, and I, Silicon Valley is one of my favorite shows. But no, and it, it took me like maybe. Well, there's season- a lot of silicone in that show, so understandable have you seen the show because there i don't think there's any silicone but i don't know but i haven't seen the show oh i don't know okay (laughs) i don't know what we're talking about anymore i just (laughs) we just i thought it was a euphemism where you know i missed it uh whatever so let's i don't know i don't understand like uh, so i have some questions about this that that we might not even be able to answer because we might not have been able to go deep but are they saying they will hold your crypto for you is that basically what this is saying it, it, it didn't really kind of go that far into it but they were basically saying they created their own digital payment token backed by the swiss franc and uh yeah uh, they're they're doing the swiss tether and they're allowed to hold your swiss twi- swiss tether that makes sense similar they they did say that this was so that they could complete trades on its platform so it didn't say like, hey, we'll hold your cryptocurrency or anything in the article anywhere. But they're definitely trying to seal. They're also trying to seal a banking license in Singapore. I know that. See, to me, the point of crypto is to be your own bank. So I'm not actually that excited about it, somebody getting a banking license in crypto. I want to be my own bank. I don't want to give them a bank. That's why I have the Ledger Nano S. Please go ahead and use the show notes to purchase your own <laughs> I think we're like one person away from getting a distribution. Like every fifty dollars that you get, you get a distribution, and like we have like forty eight dollars in there or something since we started the podcast. It's not like very many people have clicked on this and bought ledgers. We I don't know, we get like eight dollars for each one that's bought, but the next person that buys one, we actually get money. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> so, this is just the crypto basic podcast where Brent's like, please donate to us in any form we possible. Uh, so, so yeah, <laughs> I guess that's champion Brent. Yeah, there you go. Th- this is pretty much it. The Swiss financial market supervisory authority. It's a mouthful. Uh, was very skeptical. Uh, they wanted to about safely integrating, you know, the world's of crypto and mainstream finance, obviously. And uh, it's good to just, see this do you guys have any thoughts on you know do you think the u.s could get on board with this at some point or like it's a ways away 
I mean, you know, my position on this is always going to be that by the time they're willing to get on board with it of their own accord is because they're going to try to push some version of it which they control or they can influence in an undue way. Uh, and they'll always resist that which diminishes their power. And then uh, when they are forced to accept certain versions of it is because they'll have no choice. That's how I think it'll happen. There you go. Uh, so the next story is actually a Kareem story. And you want to tell us about uh, our favorite chatting app? Yeah. <laughs> Do it so for guys, the gram. This was actually kind of interesting. Uh, first, I was going to put this in the rapid fire because I thought it was just going to be a quick report like, oh, there is a rumor that Telegram is going to try to do a cryptocurrency like Libra, right? Uh, but so the New York Times recently reported through what it was essentially an anonymous um, investor who was recently informed, even though they were forced to sign an NDA. So this is take it with a grain of salt because it's all anonymous, but, you know, it kind of checks out. But they are pushing a program, something called the Gram. And the Gram is going to be essentially what Libra is to Facebook and what's up. So, and specifically what they've told investors is that the first batches of Gram are ready and that they're going to be released in the next couple of months. So as a reference point, where does Telegram stand? We're looking at 200 to 300 million global users. I don't remember the what's up numbers, but Brent, that's... That's still significantly smaller than what's up, right? Yes, um, that, that's way smaller. It, it, I mean, I don't, I don't actually know what WhatsApp numbers are, but that's got to be smaller, right? Still pretty big though, two to three hundred million, pretty sizable. Well, last year, and we pretty sure we covered this. They raised one point seven billion dollars for a cryptocurrency project, right? It's so, pretty insane. Here's the interesting thing about it: is it looks like. Kind of like Facebook has been planning this for a while. Telegram has too, but they have kept this under wraps. They've kept this kind of secret to launch it all at once and just release it. And specifically, <laughs> they're going through a different path that looks like they don't care as much about regulation or they're designing it to be able to get around regulation. Ah, so Facebook mm. was all like, yeah, this is what we're about to do. And then the regulators started to come in and be like, no, uh, you're not going to do that. And then these guys are just like, mm, yeah, they're it. about supposedly, if you believe this article, they are about to release it on the world, basically. Now, while I was reading this, one of the things that came to mind is this might have been forced on Facebook as opposed to a strategic decision. But there's already so much mistrust around Facebook that if reports started coming out about this and they were hiding it, like it would just be a disaster. So Facebook has to come clean basically. Right. <laughs> but anyway, the New York Times story claims that they reached to Telegram repeated of times to try to get some kind of feedback or response. They didn't want to respond. But supposedly they're designing the gram to be decentralized like Bitcoin so that it can be less of a target for regulation. So they figure that if they make it more like Bitcoin, that they don't control it, that it's decentralized, that they can't influence it in any way, that it'll be tougher for anybody to regulate it. So they want to just release this. This is according to the article. This is what's being reported. And it's consistent also with the fact that the guy who created Telegram is like this self-proclaimed, his name is Pavel Durov, and he's a self-described libertarian. He fled Russia. He had to sell his original social media, his first business that he started. Then he created Telegram. So anyway, the New York Times says that they actually saw one of the pitches from one of the investor pitches about the Gram. And um, that's when they were saying, hey, it's going to be decentralized. And at the end of the day, that $1.7 that they raised, it was a pre-order of the Grams. It was money that was being used to build the Gram. And they are going to return $2.8 worth of Gram to those original investors. So close to like a two to one uh, return on investment. But they promised in legal documents that they would deliver before October 31st, 2019. Team. Holy crap, oh, man. So that should be ready to come out any moment now. That is pretty gross because, I mean, what? Uh, the one point se motherfucker. The 1.7 <laughs> 1. 7 bill that they, uh, you know, what, what, what's that What's that worth now? Compare, you know, whatever. When they bought it probably in 2018. I think this was definitely a 2018 ICO and probably the middle of the year. Exist. So, yeah. This was so, the seed money. Yeah. Also, it's not really an ICO either. I mean, this is total private investment. Oh, you're right. Like yeah, this was private. Right. 
So I have a problem with the gram because if you're if you use Instagram, a lot of people uh, will just constantly say the gram and associate that with Instagram. So yeah. this kind of shows that he's like kind of out of touch with that. And like, granted, I guess or is he in touch with it? No, I mean, dude, why are you trying? It's just not a good idea trying to battle that. Like Instagram, I just don't just call it telly, you know? Don't call it the gram for the coin. It just seems like unnecessary when... Don't telly, don't telly. <laughs> I, like, you hear like people say like, do it for the gram all the time and like gram your food and stuff like that. I understand that it's interchangeable with Instagram, but money gram is also a thing for transferring money. So... And I you know, believe I know that the gram that. is also a unit of measurement, if I'm yes, not mistaken. Yes. Is that correct? And in, it's where you, English? that's how you measure. You can't trump the gram, that gram. That, that's the OG gram. You can't yeah. beat out that, you know? Yeah, but then so, there's clearly multiple grams. Grams yeah, up the grams. I know, <laughs> but I just think that it, Instagram, it's like trying to come up with a coin called face. Or book, you know? Like, I just think it's no. so synonymous. <laughs> I mean, they call it Libro, which is yeah. fucking Spanish. Libro. Both, just so. call it Libro. <laughs> like, Libro. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, this, I guess Libro would be like a feminine book, but... Wait, what did you say? That it was Spanish for what, Brent? Isn't Libra Spanish for book? No, Libro. Libra is uh, like... Uh, what's that zodiac sign with the balances? Um, Libra. I think it's Libra. I, I yeah, think Libra, there is a zodiac Libra. called Libra. I just thought, okay, yeah, no, I, it's think, a Libra. I think the reference so is that. So Libra, Libra is one of those words you can't just put an A on and make it cute. No, or Libra, the book is Libro. Okay. And All right. This is not a uh, Monero damn, I, was, I was pretty close. I don't speak Spanish. No, no, no. I was just interested. It's in closer it. than Maneco. <laughs> All right. Let's do crypto around the world, gentlemen. <laughs> There's an article that's not in here that was like my favorite article I've seen all week, guys. Now I gotta go find it. It's right there. No, it's it's, it's, it's it's on the drop down. No, not there. But you guys carry on. Uh, who wants to talk about the Chinese government and their crypto? All right, we actually have. We're gonna play a little bit of a game. Don't read ahead, gentlemen. We're gonna play bullish or bullshit or maybe or. You tell me. <laughs> but the question is, is we're gonna maybe in there. <laughs> is the Chinese government going to release its own cryptocurrency? I'll give you guys a hint. No hint. Go. <laughs> <laughs> is the Chinese government gonna release their own cryptocurrency? Uh they already did. It's called Neo. So so bullet bullshit. I, okay. I feel like it, if they, yes, they will, and it's just going to be like some ridiculous, like, centralized coin. All right, so That's... here's the deal, gentlemen. We're getting some different feedback here. First of all, Forbes reported recently in an article that Alibaba, Tencent, and five other companies were going to be the first to receive a Chinese government official cryptocurrency. That China's central bank is going to launch that state-run or state-backed cryptocurrency and basically distribute it to these other seven big companies and institutions, mostly banks and a couple of big tech companies. And that those companies are the ones that are going to interact with the Chinese people and get this cryptocurrency into the public. So who was the source for this claim? Name. His name is Paul Schult. He is an independent like financial researcher, and he's somebody who used to work in China. He was the head of financial strategy for the China Construction Bank up until 2012. So he's got some credibility, but he's not an insider right now. However, this is his claim. The companies are going to be the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, the Bank of China, the Agricultural Bank of China, Alibaba, Tencent, and UnionPay. These groups are going to receive this newly created Chinese government cryptocurrency. Forbes also claims that this story was confirmed by another source, a source who wanted to remain anonymous. So take that again with a grain of salt. You have to trust the publication that verifies who the source is. But they said that the cryptocurrency is going to be ready to be launched by China's biggest shopping day, their Black Friday, so to speak, which is Singles Day. That's going to be November 11th. Singles Day? Singles Day. 
Apparently, so that's, is, so that's like the opposite of Valentine's Day. <laughs> I guess so. Wow, we need a Singles Day. Where's I, we need? Yeah. And is that on Friday? Because if it is, we can just call it Red Friday. I feel like that's a good name for that. Uh, I mean, I don't. Okay, <laughs> I'm not touching that one. This Forbes article it has it makes other points. I don't want to go down all the rabbit holes, but the main conclusion, based on this prediction from this guy, this analyst, is that China is going to be the first country to launch a state-backed cryptocurrency at this level, which is actually... I mean, I guess they're not counting the Petro because it's just such a failure. But He said country, not, yeah, not nah. like a house. You know. All right, now here's the counterbalance to that. Before you go on, I, I'll, I'll say it makes total sense for China be, to be the first one to implement a cryptocurrency blockchain technology because there's not going to be any privacy or pseudo anonymity. They're going to get all the data on their citizens and how they spend their money. No more cash. That's like literally exactly what I would expect China to do. Mm -hmm. So anyway, continue. Well, and you actually just pointed at something that is a little rant I want to go on at the end of this or something I want to share, but it's pure speculation. So what is the counter to this? <laughs> well, uh, the China central bank responded to this story and said, it's not true that it's inaccurate speculation. And Reuters attempted to contact the institutions to try to see, hey, have you guys talked to the central bank about an upcoming cryptocurrency? Alibaba declined to comment, and the other, the banks and all that didn't even respond. So I'm going to say that this is story is very likely true because, number one, I agree with you, Brent, that this makes sense for the type of social structure that they're trying to run. Number two, this wasn't even like a hard, it doesn't sound like a hard denial. It's just like, ah, inaccurate speculation, you know? And the companies aren't even responding. Yeah, uh, if they really weren't doing it, then Justin Sun would have to apologize for it or something. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the something else I want to share here, though, is I was watching an interview by, I don't remember who the guy they're interviewing is, but he's like a Chinese investor who's now has asylum in the United States and he talks about the plans of the Chinese Communist Party. They were trying really hard to get him extradited. But one of the things he says is that the Chinese Communist Party that runs kind of like a like a mafia is when it gets to billionaires or people who run big companies, gets them to have to give over pro the their shares of the company. So here, Alibaba when I saw the name, because I feel like when you read this, you think to yourself, okay, well, they're distributing amongst some banks and a couple of tech companies, some big companies. But Alibaba, there was a story where Jack Ma had to give away ownership of Alibaba to five unnamed people. And come on, let's be real. Who's the only people that are going to, somebody who has power in the Communist Party? Why else would Jack Ma randomly, that would be like, you know, you find out, oh, Bill Gates just gave away almost all of his shares to Microsoft to five people that we don't know who it is. Well, <laughs> who is it going to be? You know what I'm saying? So here it's like they take control of something like Alibaba essentially. And then they say, oh, well, Alibaba is going to be one of the institutions that's going to distribute this currency. So it also sounds like a dream setup for any kind of money laundering and surveillance system that you want to establish. Let's just be real. Yeah. With no anonymity behind it or, or even no pseudo anonymity, Bitcoin would be the perfect thing to track everything that your entire population is doing, which is why we're so scared about Libra and Facebook getting all that data on the citizens that are using Libra and being able to, to leverage that. That is exactly what the Chinese government would want to do. And that's like, I'm surprised before this article that I hadn't thought about it sooner. Of course, they're going to make a fucking crypto. They're not going to adopt Neo. I made a joke about it being Neo at the beginning. They're not adopting Neo. Neo's got a layer of pseudo anonymity. Fuck that. They're going to be I was creating right. their own thing. I win. Brent was wrong. That I was Chuck, wrong, yes. we got we to gotta get the scoreboard up, you know? Who, yeah. who, every, every week, let's see who's winning. Yeah, we start the one time I'm wrong. Of course. <laughs> yeah, the one time. So I All do right. think one zero, I, and then we I, forget about the scoreboard, and that's just the score forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do think it's funny that the the quote that is clearly uh, translated because it's like no one in um I've never heard anyone say China is barreling forward on reforms and rolling <laughs> out the cryptocurrency. Like this is so clearly translated. It's kind of barreling, man. They're it's, barreling it's, forward. It's the river. They got to fire one more time. 
Uh, so I, I do want to. Oh, I, yeah, actually, no, I want to move on to. I'm just so excited. I want to talk about this story. Brent now added it back in, thankfully. So yeah, I must have like accidentally hit delete. I just pressed Control Z and it reappeared. So. Typical Brent. <laughs> so this is from Decrypt, and their title is Argentina's Shitcoin. And a new shitcoin <laughs> is what the title was, or like a little blurb to get you to click on the article. But the actual, uh, once you no, click on the great. article, it's Argentina to reward waste management with new waste coin, quote, end quote, <laughs> called jelly coin. Oh, so it's literally a shitcoin. Ah, yeah. I so it's not, it's, going. yeah, ah, it's actually not, it, 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 like, yeah, sure, it's clickbait, but it's very much in line with what is going on with the coin. So, and I just thought this was just too hilarious because it's called Jelly Coin. You yeah. jelly? Uh, I'm somewhat jelly. So pretty jelly. I'd like to get paid for my shit. I I make a lot of shit. Yeah. So this it's called the Hive Project and seeks to create a new trash commodity, a blockchain based token called Jelly Coin, and the government <laughs> will grant to citizens who comply with environmental regulations. So. Residents willing to participate will only need to create an account on the Jellycoin network, and then they'll they'll become a trash producer, collector, or generator. And honestly, this is kind of a really great way to. I mean, man, I I love this because no one is invested in recycling. You know, yeah, obviously they say that global warming. You know, you want to save the environment, but no one's actually getting. Like you're not seeing anything right away. There's no, there's no act. You're not getting paid to recycle. Now this is a way to get paid to recycle, to get rid of plastics, to do whatever. So if every time that you throw out some trash and then they take it and then they can like figure out, you know, what is what, you and you get you get coins for it and you get paid. This is a very good way to make people be less wasteful. So you put or, it into like your recycle bin and it's like gives you the Mario coin sound like ding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Coinstar but for uh trash. I remember reading something about how like we sell our recycling to China and they won't buy it anymore cuz they're pissed off at us. So it's like piling up and getting really bad right now. And I don't know like if that's true or not, but that I, I Kind of makes sense, I guess. I mean, China does have the highest uh, carbon footprint or, you know, whatever the... I know I've seen the stat where it's like 20... It, it, they're they a large part of the issue with global warming or climate change, which everyone, uh, I forget which one is like the more PC way to talk about it. But apparently... Well, yeah, climate that, change is the correct way to say it, but it doesn't really matter. There's no yeah. PC way. Just global warming was the bad way to say it because now every time it's cold out, everybody's like, oh, yeah, global warming, huh? And why the fuck am I shivering right now, huh? Yeah. You tell me. But so apparently it is what you're saying is right because a lot of like America, Americans or other countries kind of gave it to China because they didn't care. And then it just it started like they're like, oh, shit, this is actually becoming a legitimate issue. And now they just have way too much waste. So they need maybe they need this coin. To figure out how to get rid of that stuff. I'm pretty sure, though, for what it's uh, not not really playing devil's advocate or anything, but the last time I saw a ch or a charts that showed per capita consumption, or like let's say how many fossil fuels or the carbon footprint per citizen of any country, I think we are off the charts. I think we consume and we as individuals have a higher footprint than the average Chinese citizen. So. You know, when we say like China has a higher carbon footprint, are we saying just a, as a, as a whole? And also, I understand that they're developing. I'm not trying to trust me. I'm not trying to defend Chinese cheating when it comes to climate change, but I just think that it's relevant to talk about them being 1.2 billion people and us being 300 million. Well, this is kind of still U.S. because I think a lot of what well, basically you're right because I think a lot of the things are just being given to China. So technically, China has it, but it's like a lot of stuff that was somehow you know like from U.S. waste because China would take it for a while or something. 
Yeah. Um, or another example of that is what happens if a U.S. company closes manufacturing of something that's dirty because they can get cheap labor in China and also there's no environmental regulations. Yeah. So that American business goes to China. That pollution is now being considered Chinese pollution when it's orchestrated, organized, and owned by an American businessman or a European businessman. That's a more eloquent way of saying uh, exactly. Yeah. I'm saying what Kareem it. does. Yeah. He's always got a more eloquent way of saying what you, what you might be thinking. He's really good at it. Uh, so you are right. The emission per capita is 17.3 for the U S but because China just has more people, it's like the C their emissions are higher. What what are their what is their per uh, seventeen was U S what was the other one? Well, th this is actually two thousand eleven data though, oh, so okay. it's actually probably worse for both. But um, it was nine point seven CO two million CO two emissions, and then five point four for U S. And then its emission per capita is seven point two for China and seventeen point three for U S. So it's far more per person. You know, like per uh, yeah. however they're they're quantifying this. I would expect that to come to be closer now, though, than it was in 2011, just because there's more middle class or rich Chinese and, you know, wealthier people consume more. So so and then we're probably going in the other direction. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that article is actually from 2013. This was just like a very quick Google. Uh, and, and funny enough, the country with the highest carbon emissions uh per capita is something you would probably never guess it is actually qatar wow that makes sense because it's so small that it's just like there's a lot of building going on there world cup blah 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 that makes sense and oil and oil yeah that too <laughs> all right so enough of that shit coin it's time for that's a scam no 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 that's that's a scam is a section where we talk about the little things that happen in the crypto world that are scammy. And right now, I'm, we're just going to take a quick victory lap. We've been telling people to stay away from Substratum for a very long time. And they have shut down their Telegram group and their co-founder has deleted his Twitter. And I'm sure we're not too far away from a further exit scam that's just recently happened. So uh, the Reddit user um, Limder, L-I-M-D-U-R is the person who reported this to reddit i don't know that a lot of times brian or william will be the ones who will post this stuff when it comes out because they're following uh but what they did tell me was that substratum had less than ten thousand dollars left in their public ico wallets so yeah they have as a company they have less than ten thousand um, dollars apparently that whole buy at the top of the band sell at the bottom of the bands didn't really work out for them or <laughs> wait the other way whatever maybe maybe that well they probably just did it the way i said the way i said it so that's what really happened so yep just a i uh, especially because we got so much hate for it and i love it uh our, all, all of our <laughs> most viewed youtube videos are the ones that we were experimenting posting about substratum and i loved i loved i loved those guys. but brent let anyway, me ask you something how uh, could you know like how did you know that substratum was a scam are you like some super high level programming do you have like so much programming knowledge that you were able to look at the code and you knew that's how you knew or how did you know buddy no no no, no. We, we we knew because we looked and <laughs> there were red flag after red flag after red flag and hopefully anybody who was duped by them maybe listened to us and was no longer duped so they were a real easy company to to point out. I even talked to some people on the team, and they, they, you know, they they could have been better. They could have been a better scam if they really wanted to be, but they just weren't interested. So, anyway, that's it. That was just a quick. That could have been in the rapid fire. I just wanted to move it to the that's a scam section, and the actual scam that I want to talk about is our boy Trevon James. <laughs> he has been posting, and it's glorious. So. For those not familiar, Trevon James is basically one of the biggest BitConnect shills that there were. And he was even signal boosted on his like scummy BitConnect shilling because Doug Polk was making a bunch of crypto videos at the time and was shitting all over him and a couple other guys. But Trevon James is still making content. He's the only one of them that didn't just like delete their shit and go into hiding. So he's still he's still posting content. So what he came out with a new video. Apparently he's being charged by the SEC. And they want to they talk to him about what he did and what his role in that BitConnect situation was. 
the title to the video on his own channel was Trevon James facing SEC charges for BitConnect. Jail time? Question mark? <laughs> on his own channel? That's a- it's, it's oh his own my channel. God. It's, it's not like somebody else was reporting that and it was a clickbait. I think that was his own channel. And he's in his car talking about how broke he is and how he doesn't have any of this Bitcoin anymore. And it's hilarious. Do you believe that? That he's broke and he doesn't have the Bitcoin anymore? I, he's driving a uh, a BMW X car, like one of the X series SUVs. So I don't know. Figure out for yourself. He, uh, I remember he said that he got hacked live on air, but it was like, I, I don't remember the specifics, but it was a really dumb hack. It was like, he, there's no way he actually got hacked that way. It would have been the dumbest thing on earth. And even this idiot is not that dumb. And, uh, there, and also he said he like bought all the subs or uh, subscribe, all the BitConnect tokens at the bottom when it was crashing because he still believed. So he spent all the money that he had buying more worthless BitConnect tokens, which would be hilarious if true. I don't know if it's true. Whatever. I don't, that's not going to matter to the SEC whether or not he actually did anything wrong. So uh, also interestingly, if you look in his show notes, if you look in the show notes about in his video, he has, and I don't have a link to the video. I'm sorry. I just realized the link was wrong. It was the link to the same subtraction thing. In his, in his show notes on his YouTube, he has a link to a Tron gambling site. Like it's the first thing. It's like, tr- it's, it's called, uh, Trontopia. Is, he has a link to that. <laughs> so if you watch the video, he spends a, a decent amount of time talking about how, like, it's not his fault because he didn't create it and it shouldn't have even been there for him to promote. So it's not his fault that he promoted it. These people who were the scammers shouldn't have even created it, and he shouldn't have been able to be stupid enough to promote it. He literally is like saying that in the video. It's absolutely crazy. Um, <laughs> ah, the he's old, not planning on getting why a lawyer. Why you listen to me? I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, which, whatever. To be fair, we pull that on every single episode. But the <laughs> he says he's not going to get a lawyer. He says he can't afford one. I think he's really going for the like. If I can't afford it, it's not. Um, I, like I didn't do anything wrong. I really th- feel like that's kind of his defense here. Yeah. If I didn't benefit but, from it, right. Yeah. It, it, in the end, I don't think that that's a defense. It's not going to matter. The number one comment on the video, like at the time of this posting, I don't know what it's going to be. It says, Trevon now works for the feds for life. Watch <laughs> your background here. <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's like the number one comment. It's amazing. So I, I looked at his channel a little bit more just to see, like, what has this idiot been up to, right? He has 176 patrons on Patreon. We have, like, 20. Get get Crypto Basic listeners, letting Trevon James show us up. This is ridiculous. Please go to patreon.com slash crypto basic and make that right. And also, uh, he's he's got his next video is released. Uh, it released yesterday. It has, the title of the video is Can I Repeat... The success of BitConnect on my channel now. What exactly is the success of BitConnect? Who? Who successfully? So the first sentence of the video of him talking is, I'm going to try to recreate the huge euphoria of BitConnect with a decentralized application. And then it cuts to him going like this, throwing his hands up in the air and going, hey, it's not on me, dog. (laughs) <laughs> and then it cuts back to him talking about how he's going to do this new thing with this new fucking Tron. Unbelievable, this guy. Uh, I don't know what to do. I, there's whatever. He's still... I, whatever. It's a free, I guess, free speech. He's out there still giving his speech. Uh, and it's kind of on us to make sure he doesn't get paid. But the problem is when you give an idiot negative attention, they might just become bad baby. So, like, you never know. I just can't get over how bad that pun is. The Trontopia. Like, they're not even trying at this point. Like, that's not even... <laughs> <laughs> but stop saying bad stuff about your favorite coin, Adam. Late, that's ridiculous. Late <laughs> Man, this is just so ridiculous how this guy just is... Uh, he doesn't learn. He just, like, keeps going. Nope. He hasn't had any consequences yet. Maybe if this SEC but thing dude, it, works out. Going back to the story earlier, it's kind of like a Craig Wright thing, right? Where you're sitting here like, <laughs> how, how, how you're going to keep doubling down? You're already in front of a judge, bro. Stop. Like, you got caught. You know, at some point yeah. you're like, oh, okay, I got caught. I'm sorry. I don't want to keep making it worse. No, you're Martin Gelling, your lie. Yeah, exactly. No, the guy's just looking at the, the, at the judge right in the face. 
Listen, uh, I'm Satoshi. <laughs> <laughs> I have this paper right here from the Colombian government yeah. that says that I am. <laughs> Must be true. <laughs> if I wasn't Satoshi, would I be going through all this? Would anybody be dumb enough? <laughs> yes. Yeah, apparently the answer is yes. All the right, that is, is the yes. uh, that's the end of my uh, Trevon James talk. I'm, you know, whatever. I'll I'll talk shit about him as he continues to do stupid shitty things. Please do not subscribe to his channel and do not give him any reason to continue to make content. And uh, I guess uh, we got one more little quick scam. Uh, as the resident LA, uh, resident, resident, <laughs> well, <laughs> like I'm the LA guy as the resident LA resident advisor resident. <laughs> there you go. So there is a 25 year old LA man who got, uh, who he was able to launder about 25 million, uh, over two years. And his name is Kunal Kalra and he had multiple aliases, Kumar, Skeckle main and coin man on the internet and Skeckle main. All yeah, right. that's an interesting one. So terrible pun. This was a yeah, terrible zero out of 10 pun. So he got basically got, he has to plead guilty for four felonies distribution for distribution of uh, methamphetamine operating an unlicensed money, transmitting business, laundering monetary instruments, and then like failure to maintain an effective anti money laundering program. So, I, I guess what he... Can he, a man he, just try to make a living, please? <laughs> I know. Seriously. All he was trying to do was deal methamphetamine. And uh, also, he had a kiosk, a Bitcoin ATM, that was basically... It, it looked like a Bitcoin ATM, but it was actually just going to his business, his wallet, and he would just take the money and then just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like key, you know, and then and then he started. Uh, you That's know, impressive. Yeah. So I, I you know, because it, it, to be honest, I always wonder like who is behind these Bitcoin ATMs. Like, I don't know. A lot of people just might be like, uh, you know, it's in like uh, it could be in a lot of very sketchy places, and someone just needs to, you know, buy some Bitcoin for a drug. If or your something, Bitcoin ATM know. is made out of a cardboard box, do not send it Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of it. He got a uh, nab for selling two pounds of methamphetamine to an undercover agent for $6,000. And then the agent kind of was approaching him about exchanging 50K in Bitcoin. And uh, they eventually seized 900K in cash from him and 54 Bitcoins. And uh, yeah, so he's, he's in trouble in Texas. And uh, kind of just... I thought this was an LA story. How do we no, he's Texas? an LA man. Oh. oh, yes. So, yeah, just a, a quick little scam that this guy uh, was able to, you know, keep up for about two years. Just be careful. Like, I, I don't know if there's any listeners that are necessarily going to a Bitcoin ATM that are they're that desperate. Um, That's how our editor gets paid. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. So, yeah, just, I guess, be careful. Especially, when especially when you're buying meth with Bitcoin. I mean, that transaction... Go sour like thirty percent of the time plus. <laughs> yeah, we we do not recommend that. Now we know what the next uh, movie is going to be. The Breaking Bad movie. It's going to be just like <laughs> Walt, the ghost of Walter White sets up a Bitcoin ATM. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was kind of it for that's a scam. Do we have anything else we would like to talk about? Uh, no, I, I don't think we have any shots fired. The, <laughs> we did get a couple of questions in the chat, but I've been streaming the last couple of days of fantasy football, and they're asking about fantasy football. <laughs> so I, so no no particular questions in the chat. We did get a couple of shout-outs. I was just kind of chatting with them in the, in the chat itself. No actual questions about what we were saying. So I was thinking we would cover those in the mailbag if we got them. But we'll, we'll try this for a couple more weeks. So if you actually want to, we didn't tell anybody. We just started, thought about this like two days ago. If you want to participate live on this, we are going to do it on Twitch. Eventually we'll do like a broadcast to everything, like Periscope and all that stuff. But we, we did start the Twitch channel when we gave the giveaway. So we figured we would, you know, see what, see what we could do to get some people towards that channel. So, so feel free to do that. I just want to, this is slight, this is definitely off topic, but we're talking about Twitch. I happen to see, so World of Warcraft came out the other day, like the classic World of Warcraft. I guess it's called Vanilla Warcraft, World of Warcraft. I never played it, whatever. But there was a guy, his name's like Asmon, I, I, I'm going to botch it. So whatever. This guy starts streaming 
and apparently he gets de- uh, disconnected. So the queue time to get back on is like five hours, and he just goes to sleep, and he has 60,000 viewers watching him sleeping for four hours. So maybe one okay. day this could get to this peak. We could peak and, you know, we could be sleeping and doing whatever. But, yeah, so uh, if that guy can do it sleeping, I mean, I hope maybe we can get to 10 viewers at some point <laughs> while we're talking. I would prefer not being watched while I sleep. That's just me, but uh, maybe it's just me. <laughs> yeah, he, he woke up. I happened to be watching when he woke up. He had his uh, You were sleep- watching him? Well, I someone was linking, and I was like, "What the hell is this going on?" And I thought it was hilarious for a few minutes. And then he wakes up, and he's got his sleep mask on. And he's like, "Yeah, guys, I think I'm ready to stream now." And just yeah, there you go. You get that intimate, I guess, on on Twitch sometimes. All right, all right. Before we finish up the episode, I want to talk about Patreon. It is the last episode of the month for Patreon members. So that means we get to talk about who they are. We got a brand new Masternode level Patreon. That's the $5 per episode uh, donation from uh, the patron's name was Annette Kempe. So thank you very much, Annette, for jumping in there and hitting us with that. Uh, Masternode layer. The other Masternodes that are still contributing at $5 per episode. We've got Simon Gordon, The Bigger Boat, and Robert Laverty. All are our Masternode layer members and really appreciate oh and also the burrito project sorry burrito project you're also new from last week i want to make sure to give you a shout out too uh those guys are literally single-handedly keeping us afloat we really appreciate guys and girls actually sorry i didn't mean to annette you just joined there so i don't know so sorry about that uh are keeping us afloat and we've got uh the the two dollar the secure node level layer we've got steve stapleton jeff uh the z-man uh, uh degenerate brahmin and Ether Kaki, which I believe we used to be the, this dang in your mouth. He changes it every now and then, so now it's <laughs> Ether Kaki. Uh, so that's <laughs> that's that. So if you want to join our Patreon, patreon.com slash crypto basic, don't let Trevon James show us up. Go over there and tell let him know that you're not putting up with his bullshit by giving us money. <laughs> I'm pretty sure how that. Pretty sure that's how that works. Is there Flawless something we can logic. do for for a patron member who comes up with the best pun name? Because I'm, uh, a, I'm mean, a big you, big pun guy. Did you just big pun and then be, big pun? Oh my god! <laughs> uh, that big was pun. yeah. There you go. All right. The all answer right, is yes. We can. So. We're gonna think about it. Come yeah, up you with come a up good with pun. a pun name. We will definitely find a way to get that on the air. You don't have to be a patron member. You can be anybody. Uh, Patreon members do get the, my favorite reward that we're getting for them, and there are more rewards being announced soon. So those of you who are Patreon members, we're, you're going to be getting more stuff. I'm not ready to announce that yet, but there will be more things coming. So stay tuned. But my favorite current reward is that the first time you end up donating, which happens on the first of the month, you will receive a unique engine token from the engine blockchain that has a crypto basic patreon supporter that there are only 100 of those ever made we're down to 70 something of them uh and once they're gone we will not remake them that will not continue to be a patreon member perk we will not do those again so when they're gone they're gone and that'll be the only patreon member support token that exists there's four or five engine behind each one of those so you know one day it might even be worth a lot of money so Go ahead and join. Anyway, uh, we appreciate all of that, and uh, I think we're ready to f- join our Discord. Uh, follow us everywhere that you like to follow people, but our Discord is our favorite place to talk. We're always in there making fun of uh, Adam's profile picture, or um, I don't know what what else we do this week. The, the per- Adam's got a he's wearing it's a dolphin picture in there. It was it was a Halloween costume. I just plop uh, put it in because I needed a picture on. Uh, Discord, yeah, I bought this do- this dolphin onesie for a Halloween uh, outfit, and uh, I was very intensely in conversation when someone captured a picture of it, and you can just see it all. It just kind of looks hilarious, the fact that I'm in this costume and like like seriously talking about something important. So yeah, everyone thought that it was a. Someone thought that it was a KK. They kept thinking it was a KKK. <laughs> oh uh, a bunny uh, and a KKK. Yeah, which is not. At all. No. Adam, um, Adam will support Tron all day, but the KKK is where he draws the line. Okay, guys? 
I will support neither. And, uh, <laughs> and someone also thought it was Left Shark, which honestly, I've had it on dating apps before. Literally every girl's like, oh my God, I love it. It's Left Shark. And uh, no, it's not. But I just don't correct him anymore because this is like not like a good. It's getting you in. If you're looking for a date, Adam lives in LA. He's available. He is over six feet tall, which he gets to put in his profile on Tinder, which is the biggest hack of all time. He's also <laughs> and, great with puns. Yeah, great with puns. This is a t- new Tinder profile. Over six foot tall, six foot three, great with puns, Jewish, and I once wore the left shark costume. So that's that's it. So ladies, reach out to him. For the and- 0. .5 uh, women that listen to this podcast, uh, yeah, let me know. All right. But yeah, so this is the Crypto Basic Podcast, and we are definitely just idiots. We're just speculating. We don't know anything. And uh, Brent, we're, do not, you financial have, we're not financial advisors. I will Any, probably and- never get this down fully, but I uh, appreciate. Uh, yeah. We are not financial advisors, and we do not do not trust us for any type of trades or. Uh, <laughs> wow. Really, really hammer it in. Really uh, yeah, hammer it in, Adam. You got. You got to. <laughs> I, I have to. I need to read it on a script so I can get it down because I, I don't. I just hear it. I need to see what you guys say every episode, and eventually maybe I'll get it. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this crypto idiot community, and thanks for doing your own research. because of all that stuff Adam just said. There you go. We'll catch you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. And also look for an interview with Marius Kramer from the Ember Fund. He's the person who runs their fund. And we talked to him about his methodology behind those coins. That'll be coming out Monday or Tuesday. So we'll see you then. See ya. See ya.